This stupid, ridiculous piece of toy grade plastic can't control anything with it. Hold on a second. Instead of investing in a hobby grade transmitter to up my project, why don't I try making one myself? Well, that just sparked a great idea in Max's head. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Max and in this video we'll make a RF transmitter and receiver from scratch that you can make if you have any basic knowledge in electronics or Arduino. This is a 4 to 7 channel setup that can control any RC vehicle from cars, boats, planes to even drones. Despite this is a rather complex and tricky project, I'll try to make this tutorial as easy and straightforward as possible for you to follow. Without further ado, let's get started. So here lay all the components and materials we'll need to make both the transmitter and receiver. Instead of going into detail about every little component, I'll just explain to you the main ones. This is a long range radio frequency communication module called the NRF 24L01 PA plus LNA extension with a chip that allows for longer range. As you may already know, this is the Arduino Nano microcontroller, the brains of the transmitter and receiver, a pair of five pin joysticks, which are the main bells and whistles of the transmitter, and a couple of perforated PCB boards as the main base of the transmitter transmitter's components. You will now merge together with some copper wire. You would only need to do this if you don't have a big enough PCB. Do the same thing again but on the other side. Now we will solder in some of these chip bases to hold the Arduino. Then you're going to want to mount on the two joysticks. Before mounting on the joysticks, be sure to desolder and reorientate the joysticks pins like so. Now solder in the RF module leaving a small gap for the switch. If you're using a similar switch like I am, you can use these little metal tabs at the bottom to your advantage by soldering them to the PCB which will keep the whole switch in place. Stick the switch's wires into the PCB, solder them and don't confuse them with the other solder points. Now here comes the more complex part of making the transmitter, the module connections. First you'll hook up the NRF24 to the Nano. With the RF module's connections done, let's hook up the joysticks to the Arduino. Solder a JST connector to the Arduino's ground and to one wire of the switch. Don't forget to solder the remaining switch wire to the Arduino's voltage in pin. hooking up a 7.4 volt battery just to demonstrate that it turns on. Here's the circuit diagram I used to make the transmitter, and this is what the diagram would look like if you added a potentiometer and a couple of toggle switches. As this is my first ever radio transmitter and receiver, I decided to keep the design and circuit as simple as possible. No toggle switches, buttons, potentiometers, just a couple of joysticks. If you want to, you can always add those kind of things to the transmitter. That would add to the channels your transmitter has. 
Now let's make the transmitter's 7.4 volt lithium ion battery. I'm using two 18650 type battery cells which are 3.7 volts each. You have a choice of adding a separate indicator LED if you want, but I decided not to add one to my transmitter since the Arduino technically already has its own LEDs. Bridging a 10 microfarad capacitor between the voltage input pins of the RF module is important for smoothing the voltage and power input of the RF module in turn giving you more range. Before strapping on the battery to the back of the transmitter, you're going to want to add some electrical tape on top of all of the electronic connections. Now we're going to make the receiver. Solder in three rows of pin headers, black being ground, red being 5 volts, and yellow being the row of digital channels. Solder in a couple of pin headers, which are the power supply input pins. Once again, just like on the transmitter, connect 7 out of 8 of the RF module's pins to the Arduino Nano. The connections don't differ at all. Solder all the ground pins in one line together and do the same with the 5 volts line. But make sure you don't accidentally solder the yellow pin header strip as that's where our channels are going to be individually connected to. Then finish connecting the input pins up to the Arduino's voltage in pin and ground pin. Connect the row of black pin headers to ground and the row of red pin headers to 5 volts. Now let's hook up all the remaining digital pins to the yellow pin header strip. This homemade receiver specifically is wired up for 7 channels. Just like what we've done with the transmitter's RF module, we will bridge a capacitor basically in parallel with the power input pins. Here's the circuit diagram I used to make the receiver. And if your RF module doesn't seem to be getting enough current from the Arduino's 3.3 volt output, then you can use this diagram where this 3.3 volt regulating chip is used. Okay, so on to the coding part. First, for the transmitter. Opening up the code, which I've also left a link to in the description below. Before uploading, check that you have these libraries installed, especially the NRF24 library. It's also very important to check that you have the same radio code for both the transmitter and receiver codes. And at the very bottom of the code, you'll have these analog values that read the joystick's proportional movement and direction. These specific values then get sent on to the receiver to perform a certain function. Check that you have the correct Arduino, bootloader, and COM port selected. Then hit upload. Next, upload the receiving code to the receiver. All the RF module's connections to the Arduino are also listed here. Once again, make sure you have all the following libraries included, radio code, and the radio pins 9 and 10. After uploading, let's test a servo motor on it. Now we have two servo motors on channel 1 and 2, controlled through one joystick. To control the same pair of servos with the left joystick, just switch them to channels 3 and 4. As the last step of making the transmitter, I decided to make a cardboard and clear plastic case for it. You can download the template sheets from the description.
and the transmitter is complete, except for one last thing, the antenna. To download all codes, circuit diagrams, and blueprints, check the links in the description below. If you're having troubles binding with the receiver, try angling the antenna at a 90 degree angle. It may improve the connection. You guys know I wouldn't leave you without a proper demo, so here's the Elegoo Smart Robot Car. I'll show you how this is controlled through my hobby grade radio control system. Like I said, I won't be going into detail about how I connected things up or about the code, but I did leave the codes in the description to this setup, so you can check them out. Stay tuned for my future tutorial going more into depth about how to connect up such car to a homemade radio transmitter and receiver. So far, I've only been testing this car within a hundred meters range, and it hasn't even gotten out of range yet. Okay guys, that's about it for this time. So far, you only got to see how a robot car is controlled, just as a demo. Eventually, we'll get to control a remote-controlled plane or even a drone using this homemade transmitter and receiver. So, stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Comment on my Instagram sharing your thoughts about my homemade Arduino-based radio setup. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Peace!